I'm working with a razor haircut. Currently, I'm working right in to my section that I have taken, which is starting at right at the apex going to the top of the ear. And I'm going to start by creating the layering right in the front. I'm using a feather razor. This is one of my favorite razors. So here we go. So I'm going to comb the hair parallel to the sectioning pattern. And I'm going to over direct the hair. So I really, really like to use over direction when I'm cutting hair because it is an aid for you. It is going to help you decide what you mm -hmm. are going to achieve. So right now, the reason why I'm over directing it towards the face, almost wrapping it around my mannequin's face is because that kind of over direction is going to allow me to get my layers as short as I like. At the same time, it's going to allow me to connect them um, with the longest piece. So this particular haircut, which is the razor layers, is going to be an incredible haircut for a client who is looking to transition from having extremely long layers. And now they want to go into the newest trends, which is the shag haircut but they are probably not too sure initially. They're like, you know, I want to slowly transition. This is going to be a great options for, uh, option for them. As you can see, what I'm doing is I'm going in and very gently creating my cut line. I'm not going in in one swooping motion. This is, in, uh, this is particularly done because I want there to be that soft separation. I want there to be that wispiness to my cut line. So here we go one more time. I'm combing all of the hair. The top that you see right here, the top length is going to be the shorter length. And the bottom is of course going to be longer. And thanks to over direction, we are able to maintain and get some length in as well. So I'm going to once again show you the motion I'm starting. And then I'm going on cutting in between my section to create that wispiness. I'm not going in one go. This is going to help me create those shorter and longer pieces. And as you can tell, when I move the hair, look at that. Look at that softness that it creates. It's gonna allow those shorter and longer pieces to intertwine around each other. So I'm going to do the same thing over on the other side. For everybody and anybody who doesn't know who I am, my name is Shraddha Mamtora, and I'm very excited to be with you on Hair Brain Life today. This razor haircut is inspired by my favorite shag cut, something that I'm carrying right now. Gerard did this for me. And then I realized that, you know what, not everybody's a hairdresser and they are not like all set and ready to jump right in to an, into a new haircut. Now coming back to our cut line here. So if you see, our face has most of the balance that you need. So when I was cutting the right side, I kept in mind that I want my shortest piece to start about about where the chin is okay and then i'm going to go into it and personalize it and get it shorter if i need to but this piece is going to sit right here so what i did is when i was cutting it i kept in mind that i want to bring it up to the top of the ear on the other side and this will help me when i'm going to work on the opposite side because our ears for the most part are going to be at the same spot remember humans as humans we don't have everything very symmetrical but they're almost at the same point so I'm going to go ahead and over direct this hair and my, my reference point for me to start my cut line is going to be the top of the ear. So I'm going to go ahead and redistribute the hair over directing it forward. My distribution is perpendicular to the sectioning pattern. So almost T to the parting and then working with soft swooping motion I'm going to start cutting my line. We want the two sides to be similar. We are not looking for them to be the same exact. That's what is the beauty. The beauty lies in the imperfection. When you're cutting with a razor, you want to try to get that unevenness. Um, you don't want the two sides to be exactly the same always. It adds so much personality to the cut. Now, when you're also deciding how wispy you want or what kind of texture you want to use this, technique on or what kind of texture you want to use the razor on um, something to keep in mind when you are using a razor this is a friction based technique you're having you're going to be putting friction on the hair so if your hair cannot handle that friction maybe using scissors might be a better option if your hair can handle if your client's hair can handle friction for example they do have color but their hair is still pretty healthy then your razor is going to do the job for you.
okay razor always adds that extra oomph to the cuticles so yes that is definitely something to keep in mind and whenever i'm working with razors too i always make sure that i saturate the hair with products and the, those products are going to help me get that slip that i'm going for so now we are going to move ahead and i'm going to take one more section this time it is going to be from the apex of the head going all the way to the top of the ear and then i'm going to push the rest of the hair back this is going to allow me to address the areas towards the side and then we get to do it towards the back. One of you asked me which academy am I working at? So I currently am physically present at Tony and Guy Academy which is in Los Angeles. I am the academy director here and I really enjoy working with Tony and Guy because of the culture that we have here. Um, if you are interested to learn these techniques, definitely there is a Tony and Guy Advanced Academy as well that you can look into and find to, to learn the Tony and Guy terminology and tech, uh, um, methodology. Now, over directing the hair, combining my two sections, this is going to give me a beginning, my guideline that I'm looking for. So I'm going to go ahead and over direct the hair, my same reference point, and this time around, remember, it's your choice if you wanted to get that um, you, you wanted to get that slight uh, difference in length you could also keep it not all the way to the top of the ear or not all the way to the ear but you could over direct the hair and leave it right in front so that you can add a little bit more layering without making it too long so that's what I think I would like to do right now for you I wanted to give you all of your options it's a, it's a very easy technique a very quick technique if you wanted to do a technique like this in the salon I'm focusing on the first two knuckles, the rest of the hair is dropping and that's fine because we can always get to them once this is done. Now, I also want to talk about when you are using a razor, your hand motion. You are okay to go ahead and scoop the hair. Your blade is sharp enough that it's going to do that. So it's going to give you that V shape when you are scooping the hair like this. You could work with that one inch distance if you want it to be not that short or you don't want the layers to be variating so much or you could have longer strokes of your razor so that you get more wispiness so if you look at how soft that line looks that's how soft your layering is going to be so i wanted you to see the difference the beginning point of our haircut my rule of thumb is every time i do a cut on a client especially when they're going for a big change I prefer to start in the front because that's what your clients actually see when you are going to cut the hair so if they're going for a really big change what happens is it, they have that anxiety that nervousness and they're sometimes unsure sometimes very very excited however you want to cut the front let them see what you're doing let them get really excited and then you can work on the back. They already have that kind of confidence in you that they will let you do what you need to do without having the worry of what's it going to be like, you know? So starting right at the front, you can see the difference from one side to the other. It's nice and soft. It's framing the face really well. This is another very easy way for you to do the forward graduation. I would love for you to send questions as we go. Oh, I love it. So Pink Sweetie is saying she's going to get this on her hair for sure. This is going to be available. This video is going to be available on Hairbrain Official um, IGTV. So if you need your hairdresser, you need your co-worker to take a look at this video before they do your hair, by all means do that. It's a very effective technique. Can be used for anybody with natural wavy hair or even <clears throat> if they have slightly straight hair, you can add that kind of texture into the hair by using a razor so check this out and remember we don't even have to worry about is my guide matching with the other side because your reference points are actually the facial features your reference point is either the middle which is going to be right at the tip of the nose or past the eye or the ear so find out reference points on the face that is going to allow you to get a balance from one side to the other check this out I'm working with about one and a half inches of distance so that I get that soft face frame that I'm going for. 
So that's what we are going for. Very soft, scattered face frame. There, look at that. Already so, so beautiful. And as I said, this is going to be for somebody who is transitioning into those extra layers, a lot of layers from very long layers. So it's not that they have to have the biggest change where their layers get so short that they don't know how to style it. This is going to allow them to get an idea of what it would be like to have shorter layers than what they've always had. Now moving on to the back. And I know you must be wondering why have I clipped that front triangle. That is going to be for us to decide how we want the fringe area to be. Would we like it to be a curtain bang? Would we like it to be a fringe that goes on the face? Would we like it to be a nice short fringe where it is exposing the face more? So it's totally a discussion and consultation you're going to have with your client. At the moment, we are going to address this at the end. Now we are going to move on to the back sections. Now if you're, you have noticed that we already over directed the area which is in front of the in front of the radial. So this hair is going to sit over on the side. Your options are to use this as a guideline for the rest of your haircut. Or you can start from the back and then meet where you are right here. Okay. Now the way I'm going to work is I'm actually going to start from right here, which is our guideline. So let's go ahead and take a center parting. And sectioning for this technique is very easy. The reason is this is, as I said, a very quick technique for you to use in the salon. This is for a client who comes in. This is also for a client who wants to air dry their hair. So this will be quick cutting as well as quick styling. All right, let's go ahead and spray some water. We are now going to transition into working with pivoting sections. So starting at your apex, and I'm going to take a little bit of my guideline here, comb the hair away, and then working with pivots. My reasoning for working with pivoting sections is because I would like to work exactly as how my head, the head of my client is. So I'm going with the head shape of my client, and this is going to allow me to get that slight roundness that I'm looking for, okay? So, working with this section, I'm going to stand over to the other side so that you are able to see how I'm cutting. So, that's our section right here. And I'm going to go ahead and over direct the hair 90 degrees to the head shape. Hey there, I see I have a friend from India. Hi! Yes, I'm from India as well. I live in Los Angeles and it's, it's nice. It's nice to represent. All right, so combing the hair, our guideline comes from the side and we are going to comb the hair 90 degrees and over direct it as well. So over directing the bottom up, this is going to allow us to maintain the length. Now, some of the key points here. You have to decide how short you need that layer to be so this part right here that I'm showing you, this is going to be the shortest piece of the hair. The hair at the bottom, which is this piece right here, this is going to be the longest piece of the hair. So you have to visualize how short do we need to be in the front. Are we going to be at this angle right here? Are we going to be at this angle right here? And see exactly what those layerings are going to be. Check this out, okay? So let's go ahead and redistribute the hair. My goal is to get medium length layers, nothing super short, but I already have a guideline from the front. So this is going to be our guide from the front. And I'm going to start by going with my guideline and then creating that separation. So starting with a flat angle, maybe a slight, slight tilt to your razor should allow you to get that nice cut line so here we go same concept i'm cutting through and then i'm going back in there to get that shorter longer uneven layering that is just purely to enhance your client's texture so that you don't have a harsh line at all so once again take a look so we are going to start by 
creating our cut line, working with a nice gentle cut, keeping that separation in the hair. Do not, I'm not looking for that perfect line. I want there to be imperfections. So there we go. And this is going to start giving us that movement we are looking for. Check this out. This is the movement we are going for. And when you are going to texturize, you will be able to add a lot of internal layering as well. All right, so moving on to my next pivoting section. Keeping the hair moisture intact, because as I said, this is a friction-based technique. So when you are adding that friction, you want there to be enough glide and the moisture that you need comes from water and the products that you use. So definitely add water. Working with pivots, this time I would like to elevate the hair more. Now I would like you to notice what we did here. So our first front section, we only focused on strengthening the face frame. Our second section, or moving on, the second portion of the cut, we are starting to focus on the layering portion. When we are going to create layers, some of the layers are going to be at 90 degrees to the head shape and some of them are going to be almost at 180 degrees to the head shape. So we can alternate between 90 degrees and 180 degrees so that we are going to get shorter, longer, shorter, longer layers throughout the hair which will help you enhance that texture. So the question I see here is, could you do this but still keep the hair length long? Absolutely, yes. You are very much able to keep the hair length long as long as you over direct the hair. So depending on what you want to keep long. If you would like to keep the layers long, then over direct this probably at a lower angle. If you want to keep the total hair length, which is the perimeter long, then you would want to probably over direct the hair as, as high as you can so that you get all that length that you want to save. So yes, you, it's in your hand. You can control how much length you want to cut. So moving on, following my guideline from the previous hair or previous section and then working my way. I'm going to keep it at an angle so you're able to see through the wall how I'm cutting it. Keep, keeping my razor almost at an angle and starting with separated cutting. I remember when I was a student, my teacher would always say, don't try to make your point cutting and slicing perfect because it almost becomes one straight line. So that is definitely, I want to say something about that for sure, guys. Do not try to make your lines perfect. Let them be imperfect. You do want that. Um, the next question that I see, what, na what name is the cut? The cut is called Razor Layers. And this is going to help you enhance the texture. If your client does not have a curly wavy texture, this definitely is going to help you bring out that missing texture in their hair. So yeah, it's a razor layer cut. If you want to call it something else too, you can definitely call it, uh, let me see, let me think of an interesting name. Maybe before the end of the session, I should be able to tell you what the interesting name is going to be. Now, I want to point out one more thing. I am moving with the head and I'm moving with my section. So this is a traveling guideline. Now, when it comes to traveling guidelines, you can make that decision as well. So if you would like to maintain the layer length as well, you can over direct the hair and use the same exact technique and still be able to get the result that you're going for. The only difference is because of over direction, the layers are going to be longer but that's okay, that's all right if that's really what we're going for. However, I'm going to move with the section because I want that length to continue to um, be the same or around the similar length. Working with my section, this time I'm working with 90 degrees. The previous section was 180 degrees, so this time around it's 90. So we are alternating between our elevation and distribution of hair. So coming to 90 degrees this time around, our layer is going to have a little bit more shortness. And working with a little bit of pressure towards the back and the reason is as we go towards the back the hair density is always a bit more than the sides. Whenever I'm working on the sides I always keep my pressure on the razor almost to gentle to medium but as I go towards the back I end up putting a little bit more pressure 
just so that I can get to that thickness of hair. Our hair lines in the back, as you can see, dip down. So let me go ahead and lift this hair out of the way so you can take a look. Do you see how our hairline is up and then it drops down, which is natural. It's everybody's hairline exactly like that. So there, that means there is a little bit more room here for us to work. There is more hair here for us to work. That also makes you understand whenever you do some kind of layering, this is the part right here when you drop it, it always creates that separation. Unintentional, sometimes intentional. It's totally up to you how you deal with that, but there will be a separation because that hair is jumping up and there is the ear that we have to compensate for. Which is why, if you want it, you could definitely address that slightly differently. However, when it comes to the length, this hair at the, at the perimeter that you see is going to help you determine the length of the hair. So those are things for you to keep in mind. Now, I want you to see the difference from one side to the other. So check this out. So this side already has all that layering and we haven't even texturized. That's the best part about using a razor. Most of the time, when you are cutting hair, you are already adding that texture alongside with your haircut. Now let's look at the other side, which is the opposite side that does not have the layers yet. So this side around here does not have the layers. You can see there is a little bit of wave to it. However, it does not have a lot of wave because that texture has not been added. All right, so let's see. Can you do this hair for perms? Um, this hair on perm, okay, good question. As long as they have healthy hair, you can do this cut on somebody who has a perm in their hair. So if my client's hair looks like it, it is a bit sensitized because of the chemical procedure that has been done on the hair, then maybe I may avoid that. I may use scissors instead so that there isn't any friction which is going ahead and cutting. You can do the same technique with a scissor. The reason why I like to use a razor for this technique is it allows me to connect the lengths very swiftly and easily. With the scissors, sometimes there's a little bit more work that goes into it. So the answer to that is yes, you are very much welcome to use this on somebody who has formed hair. Just make sure that you are not adding too much friction. It could kind of make the ends look tiny bit frizzy if not done correctly. Another key point I would like to say is anytime I do a razor cut, I always change the blade in front of my client, no matter what. So after I'll be done with this cut, I'm probably going to leave this blade right in here into my, in my razor. And then when my client comes in and I'm ready to cut, I'm going to change that blade right in front of them so that they get a chance to see that you actually are using a brand new blade and you are very hygienic, very sanitary with the way you work. So I would definitely, that's a key point. I know it may seem like it's a small point. Hey, but you know what? That is a good point. I, I, would, I would want to see that. When I'm a, I'm a client, I would want to see that for sure. Okay, so moving on to our next section. This time around, it is going to be 90 degrees over directed. In a lot of different books, this is considered probably, um, this is 90 degrees, yes, but the rest of the hair is over directed way past 90. So it's, it could be said 180 as well. So this one here is 90 degrees over directed, a little bit more over direction than the previous section. And we are going to continue working our way up. Redistributing the hair to remove some more weight while we are cutting. Just to kind of go with it, just to see how the shape is going to be. So eventually if we need to remove more weight or not, this is going to help us decide that. So going in between our sections and just slightly separating all that weight. And that's gonna help you remove all that weight. So far, just a little recap for everybody who just joined us. We are working with pivoting radial sections. We are working from one side going towards the other and we are working with 90 degrees and 90 degree over directed angles so that we are able to get shorter and longer pieces. This is a razor layer haircut, ideal for all hair textures, naturally straight to naturally slightly wavy to curly hair. Preferably use a razor on somebody who has healthy hair 
and then somebody who does not have healthy hair maybe you could use this technique with a scissor the blade i'm using is feather feather blade this one is a newer one that they launched um they gave this to me when they were still prototyping it so that's why it says sample only it's not going to be it's, it's going to be sold when it will be released this has 40 percent more blade so if you look at the blade it has more separation and then the other blade that I commonly use, which I love, 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 is going to be our feather styling standard blade. You can see the separation is not as much. So this one here, the one that says 40% more blade, cuts more hair, of course, because there's more exposure of blade. And this one will give you a little bit more texture. So it's your choice. You have all these different options. Okay, let me take a look at what we have here. So. Mm, any more questions feel free to ask me questions please would this gut help high thinning hair due to uh, maybe some kind of illness okay so speaking of thinning hair this gut on finer hair texture is going to probably help you bring out some volume and again I'm gonna put it on the texture brought by the razor because the razor is going to have friction. It's going to kind of ruffle up the cuticles. However, if somebody has thinning hair, they might have to get a different kind of treatment to make sure that they address the thinning hair issue. This technique will not help with thinning hair. All right, so now our second movement towards the other side. We are now moving towards the other side. Your option is to start from the front going back towards the middle, or you can continue working your pivots all the way towards the front. This section is going to be over directed 90 degrees, but the over direction is not going to go all the way straight up. But this time around, it's going to stay a little bit less over directed than the previous section. So I'm going to go ahead and take my subsection. And thank you for all the appreciation, you guys. Yes, I am from India. When I was in India, I used to work with L'Oreal Hairdressing Academy, which is now in Perel, Mumbai. So I used to work with them back when I was in India. I moved to United States in 2013 and ever since then, I've been working with Tony and Guy Hairdressing Academy, which is located in Los Angeles. So if you guys are in India and you plan to travel when things are better in India, and hopefully things will be better in India, please do come say hi. I'll be right here. I'll be so delighted to see everybody. All right, now moving on to our section right in here. So continue cutting flatter razor, working our way into the section. As you can see, I'm cutting in between my section to keep that separation and then going back in there to address the length if I have to. Over direction helps me maintain that overall length of the haircut. There you go. Awesome. You guys have some great questions. Is this cut you get more of the shag look? Yes, this is going to be that in-between shag look. So it's for a client who would like to get a shag eventually, but they are wanting to just try out something that's shorter. So transitioning from long layers to short layers. Can you create a shag with this technique? Absolutely go shorter with your layers. You can absolutely add more texture, more separation by all means. The sectioning, if you understand the sectioning of this cut, you are able to achieve a lot of different results with the same exact sectioning and elevation. The shag layering more or less is going to be a similar cut. The difference is going to be the length. The length of the hair is what is going to be different. So here we go. This one is going to be over directed. This pivoting section is going to be over directed to more than 90 degrees i'm going to clean this section up a little bit i ended up snagging it into my section so let's go ahead and move it out of our way remember working with clean sections allows you to get clean cut lines too and with our with our razor layers you might must be thinking you don't want very clean cut lines yeah technically you do you do want clean cut lines you do want to have a very intentional imperfection that's what i would like to say the right way to present that would be intentional imperfection is what we are going for so this one's going to be over directed 
more than the previous session. As we know, we are alternating between the two sections. Here we go. And then cutting in between them. Sometimes I do end up using more than one blade. Do you guys end up using more than one blades too? When between your haircuts, sometimes your client just has so much hair that you do need to change up your blades so that it's nice and sharp. Did you know that if your blades are not sharp enough, that could cause split ends? A very common question a lot of times somebody has asked me, can my hair have split ends because um, my blade is not sharp or how, how does that happen? But sometimes because of that, I know I say this all the time, but because of that extra friction that you could have avoided, you should just make sure your blades are nice and sharp and fresh so that at least that's not something you have to work with. All right, so I'm gonna clip this away. Honestly, for educational reasons. This is clipped away for educational reasons. If you are a hairdresser who does not like to clip hair while you are cutting because you can just go right in and cut, by all means do that, no problem. Here we go, pivoting my way towards the side and this is going to help us blend it with the side section that we have already cut. So this is our second last section and this one is going to be at 90 degree. I'm going to now stand in this at this angle so you can see through the wall and understand, um, understand the cut knife. Any questions about the layers before we dive right into the front? from here. That's our guideline right here. Hi my Indian friends there. I see so many people from India on this IG live. I love it. Thank you for all the support. This is so great. Here we go. Check this out. I hope you were able to see exactly how I'm moving with the blade, how my razor is moving. I hope you're able to see the hand scooping motion that you see right there. That's what we are talking about. That scoop is going to give you that softness. Last section, just to blend everything in, we are going to do that one last section over directing the opposite way, which would be 90. And if there is anything to cut, which we do have a little bit right here, then we can go ahead and cut it there. Awesome, now I'm gonna go ahead and shake up the hair so you get to see the shape we have created so far before we move on to the front. Check out that texture. I haven't even added any texturizing technique. Our texturizing is happening while we are cutting because we are cutting one section longer than the other, one shorter, one longer, that allows you to get that beautiful blended texture let me bring this closer for you to see check this out look at that movement and the question was the length right look at how long the hair is even after adding so many layers to it so if you want to cut the length shorter you can address it if you wanted the layers to be shorter you can address that as well such a versatile technique i hope every one of you is going to try this and send me pictures my instagram handle is master shredder phd Master Shredder PhD, that's going to be where you can find me. If you have questions about the cut, you can definitely go and DM me the questions or send me pictures, tag me when you try this technique. Hey, how long do you recommend you want wait between haircuts when blade cutting? Ideally, your haircut should last or start getting better and better as it grows. That is what I would say. So, ideally speaking, your client shouldn't feel the need to get a new haircut or get a retouch of your haircut um, at least for a good six to eight weeks minimum at least that much let me give you an example my entire haircut has been done with a razor and we cut this i would say three weeks ago and it's growing into a beautiful haircut and that's the whole point of cutting your layers in regardless of it is scissors or your razor the way you are going to cut the hair the direction in which you're going to cut the hair all that is going to be dependent and will decide how the grow out of the hair is going to be so make sure that you are really paying close attention to the direction of how you're texturizing how you are over directing and that is going to allow the hair to move the way it should move. So ideally, to answer your question, your client should be able to 
kind of live with that beautiful haircut that you just did for them for at least a minimum of um, 8 to 10 weeks. But if you have a client who wants to maintain that shape and doesn't want the shape to change at all, then I would say 6 to 8 weeks would be ideal. Now I am going to now talk about the front. I think we should try to achieve a beautiful curtain fringe. Whenever your client is looking for a change and they are looking for a change because they want something different in life. Sometimes it is life that they want different or sometimes it's going to be just that look. Whenever you change the way their fringe looks, it's going to completely make or break your cut. For example, if you were to do a one length, okay, one length all along, all around without any layers. However, you were to add a fringe to your client's hair and that's even if you were to do just that, it's going to make her look like a brand new person. So this is definitely a very important part of your cut. We are going to go ahead and create a curtain fringe. For my curtain fringe, I would like to go ahead and subdivide this triangle section. How did I get this triangle section? What was my mindset behind or what is my idea behind getting this triangle section, okay? So I kept in mind the arc of the eyebrow. When I comb the hair in its natural fall, so let's see, this is how it's going to fall. And hair always expands. So if you notice, the section is far smaller, but when the hair is in its natural fall, it spreads outwards. Okay, outwards, look at that. It spreads outwards. So you need to keep in mind, where do you want your fringe to stop? So if this is where you want the fringe to stop, Keep in mind the recession areas or comb the hair and just visually take your section. If you want the fringe to have a more fullness or fuller, fuller um, effect to it, you could even get the hair all along to be in natural fall. Let me show you what that would be. So if I wanted the hair to be in natural fall, and I would be the best example. So if you see my fringe is coming all the way from my from the, from the crown going forward and the hair is just falling naturally. So that would happen if you comb all of the hair forward like this. Then the hair is automatically just going to lay exactly where you leave it. Okay. Alright, so let's go ahead and resection it for you. See, I'm just going very visually. I'm looking at where I want my section to end. And based off of that, I place my triangular section. I'm going to go ahead and clip this away for educational reasons. And I'm also going to go ahead and redistribute my section and address it in multiple sections. So let's go ahead and take a horizontal in right between our triangle. And clip this away or get this out of the way. Okay. So here we go, here we go. I want to make sure you get to see this part. Starting right in the middle. I would like her section to start about where the eyebrow is. So let's go ahead and start right in the middle. I'm going to take a smaller section because this again is hair. It's going to dry and it's going to expand. So this smaller section, I want it to be nice and wispy. So my elevation is going to be about 45, a little bit less than 45 degrees, but definitely 45 degrees right there. Placing my blade flat and gently working my way. There. See how soft that is? That's what you're going for. You want that softness. That's going to give you that kick that you're looking for. You want that hair to kick out. And then I'm going to move on and bring the rest of the hair, keeping my guide, the middle guide, as my guide in place. And then gently working my way from shorter going longer. Check this out. Look at that. Look at how it's moving so freely, so beautifully, so romantic right there. Look at that. And you can go shorter if you like. It's really your choice. Let's go ahead and do the same thing over to the other side. So I'm going to turn her around so you can see how I'm cutting it. Please let me know if you have any questions about the fringe. It's a very important part of the cut. You have to be very careful when you do this. But at the same time, enjoy doing that too. Working your way. 
going from shorter to longer easiest way to do curtain fringes would be to use a razor easiest way to do a curtain fringe look at that such a quick and easy technique and great balance look at that balance right there now we are going to go ahead and add some more hair to it we already have our guideline underneath combing it in its natural fall and again starting right in the middle If you would like to learn this technique, I see some of our friends here who are saying, how can we learn this technique? So this technique is going to be available on Hairbrain official IG. Um, the, it's going to be a recorded version. So you'll be able to go back and find this in the library and find it on IGTV. So here we go. Now my elevation is 45. Again, working with longer strokes. As you can see, working with longer strokes right there gentle long strokes starting in the middle and that's helping me create that separation that wispiness right there and then i'm going to go ahead over direct the hair overall elevation is more than before it's definitely at a 45 and i'm going to work with my one side first if you know which side is your good side then start with the bad side so this side is my my bad side so i'm going to start from here and then work my way. I'm working with soft swooping motion to get that weight so it lays down but at the same time softness so it has that kick to it. All right, so here we go. I'm going to do the opposite side. Please watch my body position. So when I'm working on the opposite side, my elbow, this time around I want to talk about my body position. My fingers are going to face downwards. My elbow is going to be raised up. Like this. And my razor is going to go over my fingers. So I'm going to actually keep her like that at this angle so you can see it. And let me go ahead and bring her higher so the comments are not hiding what we are doing here. So elbows are up. Fingers are facing downwards like this and the razor is going to sit above my finger here and I'm going to elevate this to 45 degree and work my way from shorter to longer creating that beautiful curtain fringe. Separating it definitely. I want that separation. So check this out. Look at that beautiful hair kicking towards the side. This is million dollar worth fringe, okay? Everybody talks about money piece in color. Guess what? This is your money piece in hairdressing when it comes to cutting. Your fringe that kicks out and moves in the correct direction is the money piece. This is what your, hairdress, your, your clients are paying for. Now, somebody did ask me if I have a YouTube channel. I do not have a YouTube channel, but you know where you can find me? My videos are going to be launched on Hairbrain Official. My cut, color and perm videos are going to be launched on hblive.me which is our um, library of all these amazing techniques. You can find me there and you can also request for any techniques you would like me to teach. Go ahead and request. Send us a DM on our Hairbrain Official page and we should be able to organize that for you. So moving on to our last piece. Again, working on that center piece. Super important. Laying my blade flat on the hair and gently skimming the surface like that oh yes check that very gently skimming the surface see that right there and then over directing the rest of the hair and gently moving out of the way such a great technique i use this a lot on most of my clients hair because this technique just is so foolproof like you see it and as you see you go with it look at that aha such a great cut so far now we're going to start to personalize it so that your client can play around with it herself and you're going to teach your client how to 
um, how to even style it. So here we go. We are going to now work on the sides and start adding our texture. We want our client's hair to have that beautiful wave to it. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to start twist cutting and razor cutting the client's hair. Here we go. I'm going to pick up a section and I'm going to check the direction the hair wants to move. As you can see, this wants to move towards the front. So I'm going to go ahead and twist it towards the front. Again, keeping our razor blade flat. You're just going to go ahead and skim the surface. And that is going to, again, remove so much of that weight. Look at that wave. Now it automatically starts to wave in that direction. So we're going to do that over on this side as well. Twisting the hair. And then using our razor blade, leaving it flat. Check where the bend of the hair is. This is where the hair is bending. So now we are going to go ahead and lay the razor flat. And skim just the surface like this. When you drop it, you get those shorter internal layers, separation that you are looking for. Let's bring the, the next section down. If you wanted to also connect this, you can. If you wanted to just go ahead and connect your um, fringe slightly, you could go ahead and do that too. Just go with your visual um, judgment. Your visual judgment is what is going to make you a good hairdresser. So visually, if you feel a certain area looks like it would be heavy, then you go and address that. Would you twist curl? I have a very good question here. Would you, would, would the twisting curl technique be good for curly hair? That's where it comes from. The twist and cutting technique, the twist and cut, comes from curly hair cuts. I am inspired by that and which is why I use this even on non-curly hair now to add that movement and texture. When you have curly hair, you already want to twist and cut it so that you can work on that weight. For non-curly hair hair, that's going to give you that texture. So yes, you can use that. Can we know the, the cut's name? It's a razor cut. It's called Razor Layers. Um, if you wanted to name it, I would like to call it the Josephine Razor Layers because the mannequin's head, mannequin head's name is Josephine, honestly. However, it's a razor cut. You can call it Razor Layer Shag, Razor Layer, la razor layers in, in between, like mid-length Razor Layers. Lots of different names to this technique. However, the technique is so versatile that you can, you can use this on... A lot of different kind of looks so I want you to see the difference now that we texturize one side over to the other check this out one side has the texture that we just added and all we did was twisted it and cut the uh, use the razor flat on that section to enhance that texture I haven't even put any products have not even diffused it I just twisted and removed some of that internal layer and look at the difference from one side to the other that's why I love this technique. It's so easy and so visual and you play along with the hair as you go. Let me go ahead and show you the same thing over to the other side to balance out the sides. I'm going to separate by taking a diagonal back section to get some of that hair out of my way. And then we are going to first go ahead and connect some of that layering from the from the fringe. Woo! Easy. And then we are going to pick up the section right here and check the direction of the curl. The curl is moving forward. So we are going to go ahead and twist this. Once you are done twisting it, leaving it at a nice 45 degree angle, use the razor blade flat about, I would say from the mid length and then work your way through. You're not gonna cut the entire section. You're just gonna skim the top. You still are going to have all that length here. And when you release it, look at that curl that it forms. So this is how you can bring out somebody's curls into the hair. 
Guys, my name is Shraddha Mamtora. You can find me uh, on my Instagram page. My Instagram handle is Master Shredder PhD. You will be able to see some of my amazing videos, cuts in color and perm videos, in-depth perm and perm videos on HB Live. We have a library full of talented hairdressers teaching what they are really good at. So you'll get to see all of that. You'll get to see some of my work there as well. And if you have or would like to see and learn more techniques from me, you are welcome to leave a direct message on our Hair Brain official page and then we are very happy to go ahead and do another class if there are certain topics you would like to learn. I could also teach you how to place the color for a technique like this. Okay, we're gonna bring out the top down now. Beautiful hair, she has beautiful hair. After this is done, I'm going to show you how I'm going to saturate the hair with product and then how you can um, diffuse it. Look at that, look at that curl creating that balance. Remember, the imperfections are what is gonna make this cut perfect for your client. Let there be shorter, longer pieces. One key point I do wanna say is if your client says that she styles her hair straight as well as curly or wavy, then maybe I might do something else for that client because this cut, when you will flat iron it, this cut may have longer and shorter pieces that maybe your client may not be too comfortable with. So understand during your consultation, talk to your client, um, ask your client, what would you prefer? Do you want to wear your hair natural air dried all the time? Then definitely this is going to be what I would say they want to get. Let's go ahead and look at how you would style it. If you wanted to do the length, if you wanted to cut the length with the razor, let me also go ahead and show you how you can do that because sometimes your clients do want a stronger perimeter then in that case you can use texturizing while you are cutting the length so i want to kind of get some of those ends out again using a twist cutting technique will help you dress like quite a bit so when you twist the ends let me go ahead and bring this mannequin up a little bit here, right here when you twist this hair and you're going to cut this. This time I'm not going to go with a very soft motion. I'm probably gonna work with like one or one and a half inches length and then continue my way. So this is going to give it a nice soft effect but at the same time, it will help us keep some of that thickness and some of that weight to keep the hair down. So check that. Twisting and twisting is going to give you, anytime you introduce twisting to the hair, any kind of twisting, even for texturizing or cutting, is going to help you enhance the texture at all times. You can't really go wrong with it. I do go a bit aggressive when I do the ends because um, sometimes there is a lot, to, a lot of hair to cut. All right. The imperfections make the hair cut because everyone's hair needs... Yes, everyone's hair and head is different. When you will do this cut for somebody, even if you do the same exact thing a million times, it's always going to look different. All right, so I'm going to use some soil spray before I diffuse it. Sometimes I do go back in there after diffusing the hair and then I add some of the pieces. I do cut some hair too after diffusing it because sometimes it's better to see it air dried and then add what you need to add to it. So going ahead and saturating the hair with the, with the soil spray and I'm also going to go ahead and add a curl product. This is called Curl Amplifier, Curls Rock Amplifier by Catwalk TG and I'm going to scrunch this product in. For what type of hair this style is suitable? Curly, naturally wavy, even straight hair, somebody who has fine hair and wants a lot of movement, they could get this cut for sure. My hair, by the way, is not naturally this way. It's because it's been done with a razor and the way I've put some products in my hair which makes it this way. And that's, that's exactly why I thought it would be perfect for you guys to learn this cut. Do you see the texture it's bringing out? And the mannequin honestly doesn't have very curly hair either. It's the, it's the razor cutting. It brings out that texture for you. It brings out that movement for you. And that's what I love about it. All right, so I'm going to use a diffuser. I have a collapsible diffuser. 
very easy for me to carry this around and I'm going to show you how you're going to diffuse the hair. I wish Instagram gave us a little bit more than an hour to go ahead and show you what we do because sometimes we have so many more questions. Then maybe DM, DM me and then you can get your answers. All right, so here we go. I'm going to use high heat but low air. So the setting is going to be high heat, low air. You may not be able to hear me when I'm diffusing, but if you have any questions, by all means, go ahead and add it to the chat and then I can talk about it as soon as I'm done diffusing it. Let me show you how I would diffuse the front. gets that direction that you want it to get. So here we go. page which is my uh, Instagram page master shredder PhD I'll find a post the final look I do want to give you a very brief recap we did this beautiful cut using a razor I used a feather razor throughout the cut and the goal was to create an in-between look so it is an in-between look between somebody who's going from really long layers to an eventual shag without the shag being in place so if you check out, check it out, the overall look, if you see the layers are not very shaggy, but they are short enough. But at the same time, the length that you have in there allows your client to feel comfortable styling their hair. And then eventually when they come to you next time, I'm pretty sure at that point they will feel, they will definitely feel comfortable going shorter with the layers and you'll get to try something like how I have my hair. So this is going to be a great, great, great way for your client to transition from long layers to something so exciting. So this is razor layers. You can find this video in the Instagram, Hairbrain official Instagram IGTV. So if you wanted to recap on this technique, by all means, go ahead and check it out. If there is any other technique that you would like to learn, let us know. 
If you use this technique, please tag us and let us know you use this technique so we can see how beautiful your client's hair results look. You can also tag me at Master Shredder PhD. Thank you so much for joining.